Hi, everybody. This is the video and live streaming show. I'm John Lacey, and I'm joined as always by Sam Proof. Today, we're talking all about optimizing your YouTube channel. Hi, Sam. How are you going? Good. How are you doing, John? Yeah, doing pretty well. It's actually a long weekend here uh, in Australia for Easter, so I've got a couple of extra days off, which is really, really nice. Uh, yep. It gives me the ability to work on some other things I want to do outside of work, including this show. Um, so it's, it's great to be talking about YouTube today. Um, I know you you sort of mentioned last week that you had the the house to yourself as as the rest of the family were were having uh, a bit of a break. Yeah, that's oh, kind of a break. They, they went back to Michigan for a funeral, um, so oh, super okay. fun times. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they left me here because it's it's cheaper for me not to fly and take care of all the cats and foster kittens and you have to move cars uh, twice a week because of street sweeping or you get fined. So it's like the cost of all of those things, if we hired someone to do would be t at least twice me doing it for free. <laughs> you know? Sure. It's funny. It didn't, it didn't actually dawn on me that of course, cute avalanche has all the, all the kittens. Um, so yeah, yes. that, that sort of um, constrains your ability to, to, to go on vacation. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah. But you know, you do get, you do get kittens, so that's that's always fun. Yeah, it's yeah. It was I actually had to wake up really early today, so if I seem slow and sluggish, that it's because I woke up like three hours earlier than I normally would to take half the kittens for space surgeries. So mm. <laughs> they're good to go. <laughs> they're officially available for adoption in Los Angeles. If anyone wants kittens. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Um, so we are going out live to all the various places. I won't even list them out today. There, there are quite a few of them. But if you are watching live, uh, we'd love to hear from you in the chat. So do you have a YouTube channel? Um, ha have you thought about actually optimizing that? And what kind of things do you think might be useful in terms of actually Mate, you know, putting putting your best foot forward on YouTube. So that's basically what we're going to be talking about today. I guess... Um, before we get started, I should just say these some a lot of the suggestions, uh, you know, a lot of the advice we're going to give today are things that we probably need to go and revisit with our own channels because I know, like Sam, Sam, for example, I know your 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 account has been around for like fifteen years, um, yeah. and you know, Nearly a lot has changed in that time. And we were sort of looking at this as a bit of a um, pre production meeting, saying, you know, these are all the things that we should be doing. So. Don't think that we're we're sort of um, perfect in this regard, um, but you know it's it's a good idea if if you want to actually do that. So I guess Seb, do you want to show that channel? Yeah, yeah. So you can unpack yeah. some of these you things. Can, yeah, you can take a quick look at. Uh, I'm going to show two channels. One is my personal channel, and one is the Cute Avalanche channel. And take three seconds and tell me if you can figure out what each channel is about. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so here, how do I? uh this just yeah all right so this toggle. is mine and two and three and okay so that's the other one that's cute avalanche and boom so can we figure out what <laughs> those two channels are about one i'm 100 percent sure if you can't figure it out i've done something wrong the other one if you can figure it out i am shocked and amazed <laughs> Because I think uh, you know, on on the Sandproof channel, there there are a lot of eyes and a lot of pizza, and yeah. that that in itself. I mean, obviously, it's a family channel. You you uh, include your kids in some of that content, and we do know that you love uh, love making pizzas and, and eating yeah. pizzas. Um, but I guess I think the, there's a lot the other of personal thing... insight on that one. <laughs> yes, yes. So I mean, you do need to know a, a lot about that up up front. So. I guess, you know, when it comes to your YouTube channel, when it comes to your videos and your titles um, and your thumbnails, it's really useful if people can can take a glance and sort of decide relatively quickly whether a piece of content or a channel is for them or if it's not. Um, so, I mean, it's funny. A lot of the advice I see about YouTube specifically is to intrigue and make it so mysterious and, and put misleading yeah, clickbait stuff in there. And I, I'm not really a big fan of that because... Uh, you know, it's just going to lead people to, to feeling disappointed if, if they can't get the content they want. Um, but I guess, uh, you know, uh, obviously, we, we, and we've mentioned Cute Avalanche already today, um, mm -hmm. but obviously the focus there is on the foster kittens, but also, yeah. you know, just cats in general. And cat lovers yeah. will know. They will self-select. They will know if that content is for them or not pretty, yeah. pretty quickly. And honestly, uh, cute, cute animals are a big hit on the internet and probably everywhere in the world, I'd suggest. Yeah. So that's that's really awesome. Yeah, I, I think the thing to keep in mind as we go over pretty much everything we're going to be going over is that 
if somebody has gotten to your channel page, most likely it is because they actually came through one of your videos. So if they come from, you know, let's say the Sam Proof channel and it is a pizza video, and then they come and see this thing. And yes, there is pizza in my, my one thing, but then this is my channel is a bad channel as an example. Then it immediately goes to us doing this underneath. Um, it's a little all over the place. So I may have lost that person, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you want to keep in mind when you're putting your, your channel together that you have a cohesive value for that, uh, that audience, that you're not like doing too many pivots to new and different things just because those are interests you have. Uh, a long time ago, I was of the mind of like, no, screw that. I want to do all the things I want to do. And then this is what happened. <laughs> you get sketch comedy, pizza recipes, publishing how to's, uh, family vlogs, and and uh, you know technical mumbo jumbo. So, <laughs> although I, I guess in your case you are the the common denominator to all the content, so it is like it is literally yes. about you. Um, and I think like 15 years ago, I don't know that we actually had the ability to create multiple channels on the one account to start with. So that's that's probably yeah. a newer thing. But I guess. It it is important to think about the the niche and uh, you know how and and that is a French word so I'm going to say niche. Sorry, Americans. Um, I often hear people say that the uh, the riches are in the niches, and I'm like, no, no, it's a I, French word. Yeah, I also and, pronounce it that way that you do niche. <laughs> and the thing that I I like to counteract with is the the niches are in the Reese's pieces because I figure Americans <laughs> might enjoy that reference. Yeah, I like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly like if, if somebody watches one of your videos and they go to look at your other videos, like, is there a common denominator there that's yeah. going to keep them um, together? And I guess like, um, we'll talk a little bit about my channel, Learn Live Streaming today. And I mean, it is, it is basically about live streaming, but it, it's in a, in a broader sense, it's about content creation. It's about video, mm -hmm. whether it's recorded or live. And I guess the thing that I, I'm always conscious of is that I like, I, I do OBS tutorials and the people that are interested in OBS just love that. But I'm conscious of the fact that there are other people that just aren't ready for that. Yeah. And I kind of want to think about what are the, the, the more tentative steps people can take to join my little corner of the world. And for me, I think a lot of the time that is about using easier technologies. It's also just about thinking about where else are they using web cameras, for example. Can they look a little bit more presentable on on just a video call, you know, yeah. even in their day job? So, uh, you know, it's it's you, you can go incredibly niche or you can be a little less niche. But again, I think it's it's important. And especially for the conversation we're having today about YouTube channels, that it's relatively obvious when they get to your channel what it is actually about. Yeah. Okay, um, so yeah, yeah, no, go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about some of the the different opportunities that you uh, have on your YouTube channel and some places where you might like to think about optimizing the content that is there. Let's start off with the the first one, which is a uh, relatively new uh, new feature in YouTube. Uh, I think we we only spoke about this yeah. sort of late last year as it was out uh, rolled out. Was actually the YouTube handles. So these are actually, uh, you know, use the at symbol, uh, which I'm sure you're familiar with on places like Twitter uh, and Instagram and, and basically everywhere. And you can actually, there, there are two places where you can really utilize this. One is you can send people to a YouTube, um, you can send them a link to YouTube and include the at and you'll use an, your user handle there. But the other thing too, is that you can actually ping other accounts and other channels from your YouTube videos and also your community posts. So I think it's it's really worthwhile thinking about what uh, what your YouTube handle actually is. A lot of people haven't actually claimed or changed their handle. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go to, uh, I think it's youtube.com forward slash handle, you can actually yep. uh, change that. It's also available in the customization settings and the, the, the basic info tab as well. So... But really think about, it, it should really represent you if you're a personal brand, your business, your product, your service, or your subject matter. You really want to make it quite obvious uh, to people what it actually is. Yeah, I, I think this is a good opportunity for people who do have those older channels and picked whatever random username they had at the time, which will still be you know there to some extent. But it gives them an opportunity to sort of rethink 
you know, what is their channel about and are there better words they can use that are more SEO friendly uh, for this handle purpose? And I think that's that's the thing that underpins a lot of what we'll be discussing today is you really need to think in text and you really need to think about the words and the expressions that people in your audience may be searching for. Um, because, and sometimes, you know, you, you, that might be slightly technical depending on your subject matter, but it's really important that you sort of find a bridge between what people are looking for and what you're actually presenting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next section, uh, and again, this is very much about sort of using your words is the about section, uh, in your profile. So, uh, if you go to the, the channel customization, uh, there's a basic info tab and here you have the ability to change your, your channel name. So, you know, what is the name of your channel when people arrive there? Again, it's really important to, to be quite descriptive. You've got the ability to update your handle from this screen as well, which we've already touched on and you've got the channel description. So again, and I think, I think from memory, you have some thousand characters that you can actually uh, put into yeah. this text box. So it's a really it's good, a good idea. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a really good idea to think uh, quite strategically about how you're using that. And I must admit until, you know, a day or two ago, I literally just had a single line of text. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've gone in and I've updated that a little bit, but I think I, I probably need to go back and revisit that a little bit more. But I guess one of the call outs I would say about the channel description specifically is that you'll see the first line on the channel and then you can click through to see the rest. So again, yeah. it's a really great opportunity to, to sort of describe uh, your channel really, really well. And the kinds of things that people can expect to see there. Yeah, the, the first line is very important because when they're doing like a search in YouTube, uh, if they're searching for, you know, live streaming and learn live streaming comes up, that first about section line is going to be what's in there for the channel that shows up in the search. So, yeah, think, and think I long think, and hard um, about that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. And I think for me personally, a lot of the stuff I do is driven by the desire to make a personal brand. But the danger there sometimes is that I'm talking about myself. And yeah. like the first line I've, I've changed it to now, and I may update this in the future. I think it does need a little bit more tweaking, but I just said, have you ever thought about learning live streaming question mark? And I think it's really important to sort of make sure that the audience member, uh, you know, feels like you're, you know, they're, they're always approaching these things from a perspective where they say, you know, what is in it for me? And it's really important that you sort of explain what those things are. I've also sort of uh, mentioned, you know, the two live stream shows that that people can watch on my channel. This one, the, the video and live streaming show with Sandproof um, and also my coffee and content show as well. So, again, like just just think about using those keywords that describe the content that you're working with. Um, and also, you know, really, really think about the, those keywords. Uh, you also have the ability to include links to your website and social media mm -hmm. from this about section and also add some, some contact, contact information. Yeah. So keep in mind with the links that you can, you can actually add a bunch of links, but the first five will show up on the channel page, uh, in the banner. Uh, and the very first one will have the, the whatever text you enter in it as the label, everything else is just going to be an icon. So whatever your most important uh, site is, whatever you want people to go to outside of YouTube, that's going to be number one. And uh, everything else should be after that. So. Absolutely. And I mean, it's always, it's always a bit of a risk sometimes to give people <clears throat> too many Without. options to overwhelm <laughs> them with with those and yes. you know just think about where you want to send people and especially if you are coming to youtube with a a business goal you know think about what you know that maybe that lead magnet is that you want to send them off to maybe it's a, a pdf maybe you, you want to get them to join yeah. your email list whatever that happens to be that's yeah. probably a really good place to showcase that specific link rather than sending them to you know just your website as a whole Mm -hmm. um, and again, like you can, you can create more than the one channel on an account. So again, if you really do have different audiences, if you have very specific niches, it's probably worthwhile to actually separate those things out. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, uh, YouTube is a, uh, is a video platform. It's, it's a fairly visual place. And there's another opportunity that we have in terms of actually using some channel artwork. So 
there are three places um, that you can really incorporate or three options, I suppose, that you can use uh, within your channel. We'll talk about these in more detail in a moment, but just as a brief overview, you've got your channel picture. So this is a sort of a square image. Um, and again, it should describe you or your business or your service or your, your channel. It should should be, uh, you know, should not be a generic sort of question mark. People should should have some sense of, of what that means. Mm -hmm. You also have the ability to use your channel banner image. So this is something that appears at the top of your screen when people visit your channel. It's a great place to incorporate some of those branding elements. So if you've got uh, particular colors and fonts and, and graphics and images uh, and taglines and things, you can include those there. And you also have a little video watermark, which is sort of 150 pixels square that, uh, that can appear at the bottom of your videos. Um, so let's talk about uh, the, the banner images. And I know, Sam, you've got some examples that we're going to talk through. Let's yeah. have a look at those. Oh, do you want to do the, um, the ratios first? OK, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yep. So, that. All right, so one of the slightly confusing things about the uh, the banner artwork is that uh, different people on different devices will see different parts of your your image. So yeah. let me just show you. Th this is actually the the YouTube profile banner that I have on my channel. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's not a lot going on there. It's pretty straightforward, but it uses you know my colors, my fonts, a picture of me, um, some of those embellishments that I use in different places. Yeah. But it's uh, the, the thing that is difficult for a lot of people to wrap their brain around is that people will see different parts of this on different devices. So let's have a look yeah. at this other image, and you'll see that I've actually got some overlays on top of this. So there's basically uh, the desktop minimum um, and, and mobile section, which is in the middle. And if there's anything that you really need to make sure everybody's seeing, it does need to be in this section. I should mention too, if you head over to John, johnlacy.com, I've actually got all the pixel dimensions of these listed out. And there are plenty of templates that you can find online. So it's often a good idea just to download a template, change the transparency, and just make sure that uh, the things that you want to see are definitely in this sort of safe region. Yeah. So as you move out, there's sort of a wider view for tablets and there's a even wider view for, for desktop, uh, a maximum size for a desktop. But the entire image uh, that's displayed here will show up on a smart TV if it's supported. So again, um, you actually have a lot of real estate to work with. But again, you want to make sure that the, the mission critical things are in that safe zone in the middle of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know a lot of people who actually put any information above or below that middle portion really uh it's just going to have all that sort of blank space um because how much important information you know like what's what's necessary for youtube tv that you would put there <laughs> that you wouldn't want in the center uh that being said so there is an art and a science to creating a really good channel banner uh and we're going to take a look at three that are all pretty much the same um topic so you should be able to figure out you know within just a few seconds what you're looking at when you come to a website when a, a youtube channel this is our friends tube buddy um but really at first glance i feel like this is the weakest of the examples i'm going to give you like it's going to take you a little longer than that three second burst to be like wait your friend on the road what is exactly happening here so youtube success is the keyword here um, and then there's really this only other thing is this grow faster call to action, which would take you to the tube buddy site and get you off of YouTube, which is almost, uh, kind of a, a counterpoint to using those links in the first places. You do actually want people to stay on YouTube for the most part. Um, so I think where you, where uh, tube buddy fails, we're going to take a look at video creators. I got it. Okay. There we go. Um, we get a little glimpse of here. We got some faces. I feel like this is too many faces, but we got some faces. A uh, million subscribers is bolded, so we know something's going on that, you know, right there. And they have this little uh, brought to you by vidIQ thing at the bottom where you're like, is that a sponsorship? Because if I don't know vidIQ, that just feels like a sponsorship and not an endorsement, which it probably is almost both, really. Um, Although, but really, in, yeah. in this case, I know that um, vidIQ recently bought video creators, mm -hmm. so there is it's sort no, of it's basically yeah. a parent company at this point in time. But I take yeah, the point. it is. That's, that's, that's um, very cool. Yeah, but and then you know, honestly, YouTube strategy I feel like should be bigger here. But this gives you a lot of like the 
who is it? It's these faces. What is it? It's a YouTube strategy channel. Uh, and then, you know, then we move on um, to uh, vidIQ itself. So here we got the same thing. We got a face. We got what is it, vidIQ. Um, it is YouTube education. Like that's pretty fast to bring all these things in. Um, and then you have the credibility of this sort of gold YouTube plaque that if you know anything, that's a really big <laughs> milestone to hit. Um, so between the three of these, I think we hit the four basic um, things you want to consider when putting uh, into your channel banner, which is who are you, right? What is your channel about? Like, what are you doing? What's, what's the topic? What are we going to learn? Um, the one thing I didn't, I thought one of these guys had this, but apparently not. Um, the one thing they don't really have on here is any sort of scheduling information. Um, so I think that's an important addition. If you do release regular content, that should be out there. Like, you know, weekly videos, Fridays, you know, new uploads Friday, something short and sweet. You don't want to be like, uh, I do a short every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, long form video Friday and Sunday. And I stream Tuesday. No, it's too much. One thing is <laughs> one, you know, every, you know, every couple of days, once a week, something. Uh, and as and much as I, I love that idea, um, I, I guess the thing that as the token Australian on the, on this show, I remind everybody is time zones and time daylight zones. savings. It's all a nightmare. Which, um, which is so, why I may be keeping it more vague, like weekly uploads, absolutely. which is what we now have at Cute, uh, Cute Avalanche. Whether I hold to that, <laughs> we'll see. Um, the last thing I want to say is like having a call to action, um, like our, uh, our friends here at TubeBuddy do. So the call to action is grow faster, click this link here. If you have something important you want people to do, use those calls to action sparingly, because again, anything that takes people off of YouTube oh, pretty much counts against you in a way, because you want um, people to stay on your channel, you know, stay on your videos longer. From the channel perspective, I think it's okay if you've given them that exit, it hasn't really, um, You've already broken, as far as my understanding goes, you've already broken the sort of session loop, um, but maybe not. And maybe it is still a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would keep those four things in mind. Who, what, when, and a CTA. Those are some great examples. Uh, this is the video and live streaming show. I'm John Lacey and I'm joined as always by Sam Proof. Today we're talking all about optimizing your YouTube channel. And I just want to have a look at the chat for a second. Big hello to Walter Strong the Third, who's a fellow live streamer uh, doing some great stuff on LinkedIn and YouTube. Um, definitely go and check out his channel. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, today, as I say, we're talking all about uh, your YouTube channel and how you can sort of put your best foot forward on YouTube and think about some of the ways you can actually optimize your YouTube channel. So I guess uh, one of the things we'll talk about now is the, the YouTube spotlight. Yeah. So this is actually a, a place to showcase a video on at the top of your YouTube channel. And it actually gives you sort of two options here, depending on whether somebody is visiting your your channel for the first time or whether they're actually a returning subscriber. So uh, for people who haven't subscribed yet, you have the ability to upload a channel trailer. And that's a really got, great place to sort of give an overview of who you are, what you do, what kind of content your audience can expect to see here. Um, and again, that's something that's definitely on my to-do list. I haven't done that yet, but I'm really, really keen to do that because it's. I think it's a good way of showcasing all the, the various things that I do on my YouTube channel. And the other thing is actually a, a place for a featured video for returning yep. subscribers. So, Sam, I'm curious, are those features that you've uh, you've used much or at all? <laughs> um, so the Sam Proof channel does have a, a channel trailer that I specifically made something like 10 years ago, maybe even longer which feels very outdated and I need to update, which is my only complaint about that whole concept is like, after you go to your own channel 10 times, you're going to be so sick of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, you know, I, I, I've started to wonder like, do I even need different videos for that? Do I need to explain to someone who hasn't been here before, uh, something that can't be explained by just showing my most recent video. And I'm not sure. I think if you're doing your videos right, 
that's really all you need is just put your most recent video in both parts of that. If you have the time and and really want to go at it, a channel trailer that basically covers the four points or three points, you don't need a CTA in that. The the three points that I said for your, your channel banner would work great in your channel trailer. Because I know, uh, I, I, and I'm not sure about the Sandproof channel specifically, but I know that you do have a cute Avalanche trailer that I've I've certainly yeah. watched in, in recent months. Um, so, I mean, if, you know, especially if there's any um, uncertainty about what your channel is about, and yeah. again, I guess the more niche you go, maybe the less you need that, but I think it's still a nice thing to... To just set some some context, but again, as you say, um, you know, it may be something that you see every time you go back to your own channel. Um, it's funny, <laughs> just as a side note, I uploaded a, a reel to Facebook recently uh, via the desktop computer, and while it was uploading, it would just loop over and over oh, again, yeah. and I literally had to uh, mute the browser tab to to get it to stop talking to yeah. me in my own voice that's another weird thing i don't i don't know if anyone else experiences this but i often get served up my own videos on tiktok and it's the weirdest thing Pretty i'm sure, just yeah. scrolling and then suddenly there i am talking to myself um again like i guess that. as content creators like. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing i'm so startled by it that i usually um just throw it away as quickly as i can i think oh is that sending a bad signal to tiktok Right. Um, but anyway, that's that's a whole other subject. But again, I guess as content creators, we probably need to get more used to hearing ourselves back and, and editing our own content and all of those things. But um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're great opportunities. Again, it depends a little bit on, you know, what else you've got going on, whether you've got time to create those. But especially in terms of a YouTube channel trailer, just make it short and snappy. Just, just you know, think of it as almost like an elevator pitch. You know, what, yeah. what can you expect? Um, why you might like to subscribe just realize you're probably not for everybody so you know it, just just keep that in mind but um yeah. it's it's another opportunity if you've got the uh, the thing i always say is there are opportunities everywhere but opportunity cost is real so just just think about where you want to put your time and your energy but this is the video and live streaming show i'm john lacy and i'm joined by sam proof as always today we're talking all about optimizing your youtube channel so putting your best foot forward on youtube um some of the things we've spoken about already is you know actually revisiting your your channel often with fresh eyes because it's tempting sometimes to say hey we've done this once we don't need to look at it again but things change right. over time you want to refresh it you want to give a good experience for for people that have been with you for a long time as well you want to think about your YouTube handle. So again, this is a relatively new feature that was rolled out late last year. Um, I say that time is something I don't have uh, a great concept of <laughs> since 2020 for obvious reasons, but I believe it was late last year. Um, so this is actually the the way people can reference your channel. You can include it in a, a link to YouTube, and you can also include it in videos, uh, video titles, video descriptions, and community posts. So if you want to actually ping somebody, and I mean, I do this with Sam all the time. Um, you know, if there's some shared piece of content that we're both in, I like to let him know that that's there. Um, and also the uh, the channel YouTube channel artwork as well, and the the YouTube video spotlight, which we just covered just then. So, I guess we'll. Uh, I just want to double check on the uh, the chat again. So again, Walter Strong the <coughs> third is saying, I believe having a cha channel trailer is important to have with a new channel. Yes, absolutely. I would agree with that. Yeah, I I, I don't want to tell people don't make a channel trailer. I just don't think it's as important as a really good um, channel banner and then organizing the channel, you know, itself as well to sort of serve up your best content, most relevant and recent content, which we'll talk about in a minute. But yes, I, I do think it is good to have a channel trailer. And I guess, like, I, I'm always talking about the importance of having, having a content library. But to be honest, um, if you have, like, if you've already got content on your channel, you can just cut a few segments out of those, put a little bit of voiceover on, you're, yeah. you're good to go. Like, it, it doesn't need to be a, a massive production. Uh, we certainly have some some great editing tools these days to, to make our life a little bit easier. So Sam alluded to it, so let's get stuck into it. The, the, the featured sections on our profiles. So this is the ability to actually feature specific videos, specific playlists, um, even, even other channels. So... Sam, what do you think we need to know about this particular part of the, the YouTube profile? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on here. And 
really depending on what kind of content you're making and how often and stuff is I think how you're going to want to utilize this. You can feature like the live stream that's happening, you know, like our live stream is, is my number one vertical under the tra uh, channel, right? You know, uh, followed by the past live streams because I want the most recent content to be showing up. Um, but you know, you might decide to do the most popular and the, my only, apprehension to that is I have a channel that's been around 15 years. I don't want people coming to my channel and being like, oh, these first five videos are 13 years old. This is a dead channel. So, you know, if you are going to put popular first, make sure that second one, you know, that second shelf is uh, most recent stuff. Um, you can have this be shorts. You can have it be different playlists. And I think that's pretty cool because you can show a, a good amount of different stuff, really. Um, and you know, playlist is a whole world of, of talking points on how to use that because you can do a lot with it. Um, the, uh, the thing you also mentioned was that you can sort of, uh, cross promote other channels here. So if you do have other channels of your own, you know, throw those in that, uh, channel shelf, you can collaborate with other YouTubers to exchange, uh, you know, cross promotion as well which used to be a lot bigger back in the day. I'm not sure how many people still use it that way, but uh, mm -hmm. I definitely still have Jason Horton in my, my shelf. <laughs> I should put this channel, uh, your channel in here. I don't know. <laughs> I have at least one spot. Um, but yeah. And I guess, um, you know, what, what you need to sort of keep in mind about the modern YouTube experience, and you, we, we keep referring to it as such because we've been on here since it basically began. Back so a lot day. has changed in the last 15 years. We're the grumpy old men of, of online video in some ways. But the thing you need to know about the, the YouTube channels these days is uh, the profiles. Uh, that they, they actually have different tabs for all the different types of content. So you've got your videos, you've got your shorts, you've yes. got your lives, you've got your community. You even have the podcasts tab that sort of rolled out last week. Yeah. So again, if people know what they're looking for, um, they can certainly go in and, and find it. So you want to think a little bit strategically about what you want front and center for the person that maybe isn't as savvy with YouTube. Maybe it's the thing that you really want to draw attention to. Maybe it's the current promotion. Maybe it's the current episode of something. Um, yeah. You know, you, you kind of want to uh, invite them in a little bit further. If they found their way to your channel, uh, it's a really good idea to, to give them some context about the different kinds of things that they can experience there and then just, just set them up with something they may, they may enjoy. Yeah, I mean, I we've got all of these YouTube analytics. I honestly think the best thing to do is go into your analytics, see what your top five performing videos are. Uh, hopefully they're all within the same sort of topical range and you know either that's a playlist that becomes that first shelf because they came in from one of those videos most likely so you want to point them to more stuff like that so whatever that that overwhelming percentage of things is you know try and make that the first thing they see in your featured sections absolutely and i guess um you know we've, we've mentioned that we can actually have uh we can feature playlists and the thing about featuring playlists is that you actually have uh, the ability to add a playlist title and a playlist description. And again, I'm sorry if I've mentioned this 15,000 times since this show began, but it's really important you use your words and you use your text because yeah. as cool as the video and audio is, so much of the search capability still exists in a context that, that works predominantly with text. And, yeah, and you know, it's it's one thing to have have your playlist there, but even just to include one or two lines to say what this playlist is about, just to orientate the user a little bit, is really useful. Yeah, and not to go on too much of a tangent, but playlists don't have to just be your videos. You can make, um, you know, a playlist of we talked about vidIQ and TubeBuddy and and uh, video creators. We could do an entire uh, playlist that is just OBS videos, and it starts with a couple of ours moves on to a couple of theirs uh, and, you know, brings in a bunch of different points. And the beauty of that is that you're increasing that session time because somebody who's interested in learning that topic is going to be like, oh, well, I'll just sit back and watch the rest of these and see what, what we got, um, which does nothing but help you with your watch time. Yes, that, that's a great point. And again, um... Walter is saying in the comments that he definitely needs to update uh, his Me playlist. Too. I need to do it as well. <laughs> um, it's funny because I, uh, I, I've 
created a lot of little playlists and some of them are more useful to my channel than others. And I guess the other thing too is I've, I, I kind of want to go back um, for this show specifically and I don't know if this is a great use of my time, but I've, I've been really <laughs> keen to, to try it. Whereas I, we, we have these live streams, I cut them up to YouTube shorts and I kind of thought it'd be really great if I just had the YouTube shorts in the playlist and then the last video yeah. on that playlist be the entire episode just to see if I can oh, that's direct some traffic back. Yeah. Again, keep in mind that you won't see shorts in the shorts. Uh, you won't see the link to the playlist in the shorts experience, but if you do find it elsewhere, you will. Um, mm. It's it's a really, and we've spoken about this before, but YouTube does really have a bit of a identity crisis at the moment. It's trying to do a lot of different things and it's not always shorts obvious how many of these things and, yeah, yeah. relate yeah. to each other. Um, Although I have actually, um, and I think I've mentioned this to Sam earlier, but I have put um, my live stream shows into the podcast playlist. So those mm -hmm. are actually there. I don't know how, like, there's a lot of angst in the broader podcast community as whether, you know, video podcasts are even a thing. And, you know, uh, is it really a podcast if you don't have RSS? And so as... Yeah, They're actually addressing that. Uh, this is, you know, third party information. Like I learned this from barely listening to somebody else, but apparently that is coming. Um, so in, I think, I think I heard end of summer, they're going to hopefully launch RSS and you can have your videos start as a live stream on YouTube, put it in a playlist, turn it into a podcast, RSS out to one of you know whatever services you want and boom there it is and they're going to be doing audio ads as well so clearly they're doing it as not just a video uh service yeah and i mean it, it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out and and yeah. like i say there are a lot of people you know in the same way that we're the grumpy old men of online video there are a lot of grumpy old podcasters that are like no mm -hmm. that's not a podcast and to be honest i'm old enough that i appreciate that like i used to listen to podcasts on my ipod nano yep. and shuffle and uh i i always wanted a microsoft zoom but they didn't quite get to yeah. australia before they went um discontinued Extinct. but anyway <laughs> I, I i i totally get that but again it's it's another opportunity and you know my thing is if i'm creating content i'm putting time and energy and effort into that i want to spread that as as widely as it makes sense to do so especially if i'm giving that away for free if i'm charging for it that's a whole other story but uh, generally, in, in terms of building awareness, if you've got something and it kind of makes sense to put it on a platform, I genuine, genuinely, I can't speak, I recommend that you do that for the most part um, because it's it's just a great way of building awareness. Um, but again, we'll, we'll see how that, that uh, sort of plays out in the larger YouTube experience mm -hmm. as we move forward. So this is the video and live streaming show. My name's John Lacey and I'm joined as always by Sam Proof. Today we've been talking all about optimizing your YouTube uh, profile. So I think what we might do, um, if anybody in the chat is open to this, um, and we probably should have warned you ahead of time, but if anybody wants us to have a look at your channel, uh, leave, leave uh, your username or a link in the chat. Uh, we would love to have a look and give you some feedback. Again, we'll be nice about it. We're not going to be mean. Um, yeah. But maybe it, while we wait for a, an audience volunteer, maybe we can revisit some of the things we've already spoken about. So uh, one, and again, this is true of anybody, uh, but especially of someone like Sam, who's had the same channel for 15 years, you want to revisit your yeah. YouTube pro <clears throat> profile often and with fresh eyes because things can get out of date. You, you can think of different ways of expressing things. You, you know, maybe the focus of your channel has changed. You want to make sure that you uh, you go and look at that periodically because I think sometimes it's so easy to just set and forget and uh, that's not a great experience generally for your users. The second part is uh, of our discussion today is about the YouTube handle. So again, that's a relatively recent feature uh, and that's the way that people, you know, you can use that YouTube handle in a URL so you can send people to the channel, but you can also uh, tag people in your videos and your community posts as well. Um, we haven't really spoken about community posts. Uh, they, they're not on no. the homepage yeah. itself, but that, that might be something we'll come to in a second, but I'll keep going with this recap. So the about section, uh, this is the place where we have things like our title of our channel, so our channel name, our description, we have the links, uh, we have contact information if you choose to include that, 
And again, it's really important to to sort of summarize what your channel's about, who it's for, who you are, just to give people ideas, but also to use that same language that people are likely to be searching for. Uh, it's, it's always good to keep that in mind. And of course, we have the YouTube uh, channel artwork. So again, we have your channel icon, which is a, a square. It's a square size. They do, they do apply sort of a, a circle mask around that. We also have the channel banner itself, and we have the ability to add a watermark if you want to do that. And again, one of the things I sort of mentioned briefly, and I think it's worth revisiting in this recap right now, is that uh, your, your channel image, your, your channel banner is quite large. This is <laughs> mine. And, you know, I, I feel a little bit self-conscious sharing this with you in this context, <laughs> but there is a reason I'm doing this. And that's because the thing that's a little bit ab abstract, a little bit hard to understand the first time out is that different devices will see different parts of this image. And I've got an overlay here. So really you wanna make sure that the important stuff uh, is in the, the dead center where the desktop minimum and mobile section is. But you also want to include maybe a bit of color, maybe a bit of texture in these larger sections. And especially if, uh, you know, the entire frame will be shown on a smart TV where supported. So keep that in mind. Oh, you want to consider all those uh, typical branding things. You want to think about your calls to action and you really want to signal to people watching what your channel is actually about. And we have the, the YouTube video spotlight, so the ability to have a channel trailer, again, to tell people what you're all about, and the ability to feature a particular video for returning, uh, returning visitors. And we also have the featured sections, so that's where we can feature different videos, playlists, or other channels. So Sam, I don't know. I don't think we've got any volunteers in in the chat that's just okay. yet. So that's okay. <laughs> um, again, we should probably warn people before we spring that on them uh, yeah. in future. But um, I guess uh, are there any things? And I we mentioned community features there briefly. Yeah, like they're not really you. on the the homepage profile, but they're an individual tab there. So yeah. how do you recommend that people use community features? So the interesting thing to keep in mind about the community feature is it it's it's like almost YouTube's answer to Twitter, but it's not quite there. Um, it does a lot of the same things. It gives you the ability to do like a social post. You can do an image. You can do a poll. Now you can do an image poll as opposed to just text. Um, and that's all great. People can give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. They can share it. They can reply with a comment. So in all of those ways, it is a social media feed. Um, and it does, to some extent, show up on your subscribers' uh, experience, I think primarily on mobile. I'm not sure I've ever seen it show up on desktop. Um, and I don't, I don't think random people get to see it. So that, that's, I think, the big difference between um, <clears throat> How, uh, um, how it reacts compared to a Twitter. So here's, here's my uh, cute avalanche mm -hmm. community page. So, uh, and I use this right now sparingly. I wish I did it more. And if, you know, <laughs> if TikTok goes away uh, and Twitter gets worse, I will probably double down on this even more. But I, you know, I try and do as many photo posts as I can. And these are just quick updates uh, related to our foster cats. So we got, you know, pictures and just happy Wednesday, whatever. Uh, occasionally we'll, you know, link to a video, which you can do in either by dropping the link in, you can actually just uh, actually call up the link. So if I wanted to do one of these, I go here, I go to create. And uh, it goes to Samproof because I'm logged in on that. So mm -hmm. anyway, you can <laughs> look through your own videos that way and embed them. And I guess the um, other thing to, yeah. to call about the, the video sharing part of that specifically is they don't have to be your own videos. They can be right. literally anything that's sort of publicly available on YouTube. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's funny, again, I, I tend to post YouTube shorts at sort of 9.30 a.m. in the morning Sydney yeah. time. And then at 9.30 at night, I'll actually create a community post that'll talk about it a little bit and just link to it. Um, and I, I don't know really if that's uh, if that's really helping the views. I haven't sort of dug into the analytics too closely in terms of right. that. But um, I, for me, like especially if you're maybe only creating a video once a week, it's a really great touch point uh, to communicate with mm -hmm. your subscribers between those times. Yeah, and I, I, I guess the thing, like, I, 
in some ways, a lot of social media is, I, and I think humanity, this is true of humanity as well, we're disproportionately interested in the new and the, the novel. And if you're creating any kind of um, evergreen content, I think it's really important to pull that out and remind people it exists and link to it yeah. periodically. Um, because it can, some of these things can get lost in, in the feed so quickly. And, you know, if you've got something to share that's worth sharing, I think you really need to use those features. Um, so, yeah, Sam, um, I, you know, you can create those, those polls, image or text polls. Mm -hmm. You can uh, add posts. You can do yeah. uh, text posts, images, and you can feature those videos. So, again, and, like, I find, um, you know, I will often see those uh, on desktop uh, amongst, um, like, if I'm watching somebody's video, I may even see those featured on, on the screen at the same time further down, um, which has been really interesting. And, again... I, I just think it, it's another opportunity. So again, that that thing about opportunity yeah. cost is is something to always be mindful of. But I think it's worth exploring. And I must admit, I haven't done very much of that this week. But generally, I like to post most days. Yeah, I I think the thing with the community tab is this is just a great opportunity for engagement outside of a video, um, and it does give you that opportunity to touch base with a subscriber who may not have been served the video that you've done most recently. Uh, I think, so we talked about polls, vidIQ does these polls uh, pretty religiously and gets really great return. Obviously they have a lot of followers, um, but they get a lot of engagement. I don't even know what this is, but I'm gonna guess here. Boom, you got, look at all that. And that's the great thing about polls like this is if you have questions like, I don't know, what should I do in my um, uh, uh, YouTube trailer? I'm going to do a new YouTube trailer. What do you think I should do? Put your poll in and be like, you know, is it this topic? Is it this topic? What, you know, what should my first shelf be? Should it be my most popular videos, my shorts or my live stream videos? Stuff like that. You know, you have an audience uh, and your community is the number one, per, you know, target audience that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So take their, uh, take their opinions on things. Uh, Walter, awesome. Uh, all great reminders on the community tab. Good. Yes. Utilize Absolutely. Um, and I guess like uh, one example I, I often see is that people will already have their videos uh, created and edited and ready to go. And they'll say, which one of these three videos do you want to see mm -hmm. next? And yeah. just, like just reinforce the fact that maybe you have a weekly upload schedule and, you know, you give them three options. Um I, I've seen uh, s some funny ones in terms of uh, this guy that plays the bass and he's he rearranges popular songs mm -hmm. with these insane um, bass uh, lines. And they're really, they're entertaining and it's, the musicianship is amazing, but they're also yeah. really quite funny. Um, so again, like what, whatever you can do to incorporate people's feedback and sort of make them feel part of the process. And speaking of the, being part of the process, uh, we would love to hear if there are particular things that uh, the people watching would like us to cover in, in future shows. Um, we've done a lot of different things. We've looked at OBS Studio. Um, we've looked at uh, building a content calendar. We've uh, spoken about CapCut and Camtasia and video editing and shorts and all kinds of things. But if there are any particular subjects you would like us to maybe either revisit or, or tackle because we haven't looked at them previously, we'd love to hear about that. So whether you're watching live, whether you're watching later on, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. So that would be amazing. Or maybe we'll do a poll on our uh, YouTube community. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. I think we, yeah. we probably should do that. The only thing is I do like to schedule these things out sort of a week ahead of time. But sure. we'll figure it out. It's 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 great. I mean, we so, get a general one for the future. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. All right. So this is the video and live streaming show. I'm John Lacey and I'm joined by Sam Proof. Today we've been talking all about optimizing your YouTube channel. So uh, what can you actually do to put your best, best foot forward on YouTube? Um. And Sam, we uh, we might talk a little bit more about YouTube in a second, but before mm -hmm. we get there, where can people find out more about you and what's your content and connect with you? Sure, you can find me on all the platforms as Sam Proof or TikTok. It's official Sam Proof, but you can find all my links on uh, samproof.tv. 
Nice. And if you want to catch up with anything I'm doing, uh, you can head over to johnlacey.com. I've got the links to all the social places and a whole bunch of videos and articles about a number of different topics. And there is actually an article about today's topic. Mm -hmm. And it's especially useful if you want to uh, learn about the different dimensions that are shown on different devices uh, in terms of that YouTube channel art. So... Sam, as we uh, we sort of reach the the end of our hour, um, is there one thing that you'd like to maybe set as a little bit of homework for yourself, maybe in the next week of something that you'd like to tweak or improve on one of your own channels? Uh, I mean, all of my focus right now is going to uh, Cute Avalanche, which, um, by the way, I've been working on getting our 4,000 watch time hours. We just hit 1,900. Hello, Garen. Welcome just hitting the end. Um, so we're, we're, we're set to hit 2000, the halfway mark this weekend, fingers crossed. Um, so really I'm just, everything I'm doing is toward that goal right now. And I think my plan is cause right now we're getting majority of those watch time views off of our live stream, which because we are live streaming foster cats, that is not a, um, something that we're always going to have. So I need, you know, my, my big goal is to create the plan for when we can't have the live stream, how we can continue to push forward on those watch time hours. Uh, and it's going to be like scheduling out a certain amount of not shorts or live content. <laughs> sure. It's, it's interesting. And again, um, even though we've both been using YouTube for, for roughly the same amount of time, um, my new channel is, I think it's maybe a year old at this point. Mm -hmm. And, um, so obviously Sam's been using the same channel for a solid 15 years and has thousands of subscribers and, and hundreds of videos, I'm sure. Um, on my learn, living uh, learn live streaming channel, um, I'm actually at the 99 video point. So the next thing I upload is going to be the 100th, which is, nice. you know, it's, it's a good little uh, milestone. I'm aware that a lot of those videos are live streams or YouTube shorts, but I, I think it represents, you know, a pretty solid effort um, for the last year or so. So... I'm, I'm happy with that. I guess the one thing that I want to do for my own channel is I really want to build a, ch a channel trailer. And again, mm -hmm. I probably want it to be really short and snappy, but I, I'd love the that to be there so that if people are visiting my channel, they can get an insight into what it's all about really, really quickly. That would be amazing. Um, Walter has put in a comment about something he'd mm -hmm. like us to see in a future show. And this is about protecting channels from scams and hackers. And this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately. And I've been watching a lot of content and listening to podcasts. And I'm actually, I, I really, I've decided I need to buy some physical UB keys to, to make sure that I've got some multiple factor authentication. So maybe that is something that we can cover in a future show. Okay. Um, because there, there's been a lot of examples of even very popular channels that have been hacked recently. And... Um, some some content about a particular person that I don't even want to name here has, has been featured and, and people have fallen for, for many scams. So just be aware of that. I, I think my, my general advice there is if something seems too good to be true, uh, you know, it probably is. So yeah. be, be aware of that as a viewer, but also make sure using strong passwords that you're using multi uh, factor authentication however that's supported for the different platforms but again that is something i do want to dig into deeply uh in a future show so i would love to to actually do that we might add uh copyright infringement stuff in in that topic because you know <laughs> there there are people out there that you know will download your videos and create their own channels and, yeah, yes I think that fits in all right <clears throat> Okay, so, uh, you know, we've got our homework here. And again, for those watching, you know, if you think about those things that we're, we're about like today, and again, like you don't need to, to do, do a whole lot of stuff, but what's one thing that maybe you can have a look at over the next week and just improve on your channel? Um, and again, I guess the other thing that I want to revisit is my channel description. I have made it better than it was like a couple of days ago. But again, I think there are some great opportunities to be had there. So, Thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Sam, do you have any anything to leave people with? Uh, yeah, go to Cute Avalanche if you're in Los Angeles. Those cats are available for adoption <laughs> right now. Um, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, use your community tabs. Use my community tab. I think I would, I would love for Twitter to collapse 
so that I could just focus on the YouTube community tab. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining us live. And thanks for those watching later on. Uh, we really appreciate the support. And we'll talk to you again soon.